I get depressed, it's stressful, I need to feel pain. It's either hurt someone else or hurt myself. Cuts, burns, sometimes I would stab with a knife, cut open and then burn it on top. Cigarette burns, uh, screwdrivers, knives. Heat them up while you're cutting yourself, you burn yourself. I got both arms. I've slipped my wrist before. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. This is Jeans Cruz, the soldier who captured the Iraqi dictator Saddam Hussein. We meet him in his small apartment in the Bronx, New York. The shiny medals mark the day he became a hero, but reality is harsh. Yeah, great. We caught someone on top of the line. Now, did we victoriously get something for it? Making my life more difficult. That night, we were ordered to um, search the field, search the house, you know, complete raid at full strength. Because this was, uh, according to the intel, was the one. We came upon, by the orchard in the house, a little stream that has some pipes, uh, PVC pipes sticking out. We found a cinder block with ropes sticking out of the ground, and like, um, it was more, more like 12 inches by 12 inches. The commander was like, pull it open. I threw the flash grenade in. I jumped down first. The other guy jumped down um, right behind me. We get down there and the smoke's starting to clear out, and there is this guy on by his bunk with an AK-47 in his hand. Dazed out, stunk like hell. And like, it was like pure crap. He didn't look really like Saddam Hussein. He looked like some really bummed out guy that was down there dehydrated, skinny, and apparently hasn't had a shower in months. This afternoon, I have a message for the Iraqi people. You will not have to fear the rule of Saddam Hussein ever again. The success of yesterday's mission is a tribute to our men and women now serving in Iraq. My oldest one has seen me go through one of my ups and downs, flip out, break down, cut myself, burn myself, fight. This is one of the few reasons that Jeans leaves his house, to take his son to school. The rest of the day he stays home. Panic attacks, depression, and chaos dominate his life. Everybody sees these, uh, you know, they're pretty, you know, shiny and stuff. But I'm still in poverty. I'm still trying to survive off bare minimal. I got, you know, kids that need health insurance and can't afford it. Jeans has been living here all his life. One of the poorest neighborhoods of New York, the Bronx. To escape from there, he enlisted in the army. But now, six years later, he is hardly able to support his family. He gets no benefits at all. Jeans now fights the army that once labeled him a hero. I looked at it and thought, this can't possibly be happening. It's so obvious, it's so bizarre. Research journalist Joshua Course. By coincidence, he ran into stories of soldiers who had just returned from war. At that point, Course does not realize he's uncovering a big story. This is the story of soldiers who are being purposely misdiagnosed by army doctors, who are being pressured to label them mentally ill, a pre-existing personality disorder, so that after they leave the army, they never have to pay them disability pay or medical care for the rest of their life. I would curse up a storm, I would be pissed off, yelling everything, because so much time, like I said from the start, so much time is service and everything else. You come back to have to be dealing with all this crap all over again, being treating you like a piece of gum in your shoe.
As a soldier of a special unit, he has but one mission, to find and capture members of the Iraqi regime, including dictator Saddam Hussein. We would spend days and, or weeks out just um, overviewing areas. We would sit out in a, on top of a mud hut. What our mission consisted of was getting information to where he might be hiding or had hideouts. Go to that location and spend anywhere from three to seven days watching this location. That means you're literally laying out hiding for that amount of time. Watching who comes in, who comes out, is he there, who is he not, expensive cars, um, what hand they wash with, you know, what they ate, everything. So we actually got the correct guy. During the raids, when we would capture other guys that looked like Saddam Hussein, I mean, drop dead look alike. Week after week, he has to survive secretly in constant danger of being discovered. It forces him to do things he never wanted to do. My main thing was that if you're seen, either by a kid or an adult, you have to take him out quietly without making any more fuss. Because if one kid comes out and sees you from, you know, 10 feet away and he goes runs back and tells one person in the village, before you know it, you're surrounded quietly because the village won't make noise. They just go from one area to one area to one area, and then you're surrounded. And we don't work in groups of five, six, or seven, or eight. It's only three guys and three different positions in a neighborhood with maybe two or three hundred people. Um, so literally, you will have to kill children that see you, and um, or take them down, you know, knock them out so they can't see them until you're done with your mission. It's it kills you emotionally. You have to do things to these kids to make them stop. So you have to physically hurt them. That's what you're ordered to do. On the 13th of December, his mission is accomplished. Six months later, Jeans comes home, suicidal. That's the hole. <clears throat> For someone who played such a key role in the war on terror, uncovering Saddam Hussein, you think that he would be an honored soldier, one who they would serve with all of the medical care and benefits that the American army can provide. And that's just not happening. After his return home, Jeans takes 24 pills a day to keep his depressions under control. Everything changed since he got home. They honored him with plaques and parades, but when home alone, he mutilates himself. Jeans has a post-traumatic stress disorder. He's not able to return to Iraq, but instead of providing treatment, the army decides to give him an honorable discharge. At the time, I didn't even know what the discharge was. They, you know, according to everything I was going through, I was going for PTSD. So I was guessing myself it was for post-traumatic stress disorder. They started rushing with my paperwork so fast for everything that apparently everything was getting also lost in transaction. I didn't know towards the end that they gave me a 513, which is a personality disorder, which is according to them, is having uh, more than one personality and have a personality previous to being in a service. What this exactly meant, Jeans didn't know at that point. Neither did Joshua Course. He falls into the case of the just-returned soldier, John Town, honored with a Purple Heart for his war wounds. He said to me, uh, I was struck by a rocket, so they diagnosed me with personality disorder. And I thought, wait, what? Uh, you know, in journalism school, they teach you when something doesn't make sense, that's where you dig. And as I got into this topic, found out that uh, this diagnosis, not only did it not fit, but that they had purposely misdiagnosed 22,500 soldiers in the last six years, and that cheating those veterans out of their benefits was saving the military $12.5 billion. Jeans was told that his mental wounds were not caused by his experiences in the war, but that they were caused by a pre-existing personality disorder, something he supposedly had always suffered from. And so they say they have no obligation to provide him benefits of any kind. 
What did you think when you found out? I was pissed off as hell, you know. Uh, what else am I? I go, I didn't understand his. Did all this time, three years straight, you know, a year and a half in Iraq. No problem whatsoever. Come back and I'm having these problems now. You kick me out the service once, once I re-enlisted. And now you're telling me that this is something I had before. So why didn't from the start basic training even, when it was my basic, uh, a Calvary Scouts basic training, it's one of the hardest basic trainings there is. Everything's combined for almost seven months long. If I didn't show symptoms through my basic training on an extreme pressure, how come after all this, now you're telling me that I have that? They can't explain. They didn't want to explain. الحكم على المدان صدام حسين المجيد بالإعدام شنقا حتى الموت لارتكاب الشعب كجريمة ضد الإنسانية وفق الماسة معاش أولا أليس بدلالة المادة While Saddam Hussein stands for trial, Jean's situation worsens. They now also deny his physical wounds. The degenerative joint disease, upper respiratory infection, finger dislocation, tinnitus, degenerative joint disease, the right knee, I mean, all of these conditions, every single one of them, are battle-related. I think it's absurd. I think it shows the absurdity of this scandal. Kept constantly getting denied. And the only reason I kept got, getting denied was because in their records, they didn't show proof that I was in, serve, in combat. I didn't receive no kind of combat commendation stating to them that I seen combat. But you have all those medals. Exactly. These pictures didn't matter. It doesn't matter to them unless it takes somebody else to put their a foot up the rear end to say, hey, are you not looking? Are your eyes shut or something? He has proof right there. Oh, we must have missed it. How can you miss it? Every day, Joshua Kors receives mails from desperate veterans. He has won several prestigious awards with his published articles and has been a witness in congressional hearings. The question is, how is it possible that this is still happening? A stack of cases were delivered to the Surgeon General's office and her office reviewed these cases, decided that all of the cases were properly diagnosed. But I did a touch more reporting and I found out that in the six months they did what they called a thoughtful and thorough review, they didn't interview a single soldier, not even the soldiers whose cases they were reviewing. All they did do is go back to one of the doctors who was in charge of making these fraudulent diagnoses and said, hey, uh, did you get it right the first time? The doctor said, yes, yes we did and they shut down the review at that point. So, have a good weekend. Okay, you or Jack, you'll be here later sometime? All right, that's good. Thank you, bye. After five years of bureaucratic battles, Jeans now has a small disability benefit just because a senator took his story seriously. Within two weeks, the benefit was arranged. I didn't watch it, so she didn't care about it. Those main memories right there, uh, hurting children, are always going to be there. There are times when you can close your eyes and all you see is that child, because you know what? I'm, I'm going to be sitting there sitting, watching a movie with my son, and you look over and your son is no longer your son's face, it's that child's face. It was one of the children's faces from out there that you've seen killed, of that you've injured, of that you killed, and um, that's gonna live with you, and that's the worst. Thank you.